right, welcome back. We are heading into your five and a half foot jumpers, the last couple of skiers here in this women's prelim. And um, we're gonna start off with Paige Rini and Stanislava Pro Prosvetova out of Ukraine, heading into some big jumpers as we work our way to our top seed of Brooke Baldwin, representing Team USA. And so all of these ladies completely capable of putting out some really big jumps and they have a five and a half foot ramp to help them out with that. And we're gonna see some really great jumping. Some of these girls, overall competitors, definitely wanna get some good scores for that event. The boat probably is gonna take a simulation pass and then get right into it. As we head into your top seeds in this women's jump preliminary event. Yeah, the Nautique heading back down the lake to pick up Paige. And so these ladies really fully capable of challenging our leader right now, Agustina Varas, with a score of 46.2 meters followed by a tie between Shay O'Brien and Kennedy Hansen with 43.5 meters. Then myself, Charlsey Newman, with 40.4 meters. As we head into these last couple, we're gonna sort out kind of the placement going into these finals tomorrow. So the ski nautique just making its way down the jump leg for its simulation pass. And then we're going to come in to these last couple of jumpers here. Definitely some diverse representation. We've got Canada, Ukraine, Italy, France, another France, and USA. So these girls coming from all around to ski here at this under-21 Worlds event. All right, so the boat is currently right, picking up Paige Rainey. We're going to go right into this jump event. I'm the 21 World War Ski Championships. I am Tony Lightfoot. Here on my left, on your right, is uh, Zane Nicholson. How you doing? Hey, Tony, I'm glad to be here. Uh, you know, I got to watch the boys ski this morning. It was an awesome event. Uh, 
All right, here we go. Paige Rainey, your first five and a half foot jumper in this under 21 women's preliminary round. Opting for a three quarter cut approach. See what she does coming in for jump number one, Paige Rainey representing Canada. Page with a solid looking jump number one. Definitely gonna wanna get a good jump score here for overall. No, there's a couple of those girls kind of hashing it out. It's gonna be pretty close in that event. But right now, she's trying to make it through to the finals. So Paige Rainey with a 41.9 meter jump. Skiing into fourth place with that score, 137 feet. So right now, Shea, Kennedy, and Agustina still holding on in those top three spots. But Paige is coming back in. Now this is jump number two. Paige Rini sticking with that three-quarter cut approach. Went pretty much a non-issue right now. Slight cross headwind. Might be a better looking jump there. On jump number two for Paige. Just gonna wait for a distance right now with a 41.9 meter jump. Thank you. So just waiting for a distance for Paige on jump number two. All right, so Paige Rini moving up to that second spot with 44.6 meters, 146 foot jump there. So definitely pushing up her score a little bit. Going to try to challenge the leader here on jump number three, Agustina Varas, currently leading with a 153-foot jump, 46.5 meters. All right, here we go, Pedrini coming in. This is jump number three, third and final attempt. representing Canada. Another nice jump number three for Paige. Just three solid looking attempts from her and that might even push out her distance a little further. So Stella Anastasi now two passes down, 16 to 40, point two five minutes now getting ready for the 13 meter line or 32 
some good folks out there abreast of what uh, what they should expect to see and just precisely how Yeah, you can see Paige just looking really solid coming off the jump. Not in a bad position. Not taking too many risks as we wait for her distance on that third and final jump. All right, so 44 meters even for Paige there on jump number three. So she will stick with her second score as she goes into the finals. And up next, we'll have Stanislava Prosvetova representing the Ukraine on the water. She's your fifth seed coming into this preliminary event. All right, Stanislava coming in. This is jump number one. Another skier taking a three-quarter cut approach. Just a nice, easy-looking jump for her as she gets a solid score in the books on jump number one, leaving her room to kind of push out that distance, work out any technical or timing issues she may have. All right, so 120 feet there on jump number one. So Stanislava just slipping out a little bit, putting her into the 13th position right now, 36.7 meters. So definitely a lot of room for improvement there. Wasn't really that aggressive on her opening jump, so probably going to want to kind of up the volume here a little bit. All right, here we go. Stanislava Prosvetova coming in, representing the Ukraine. This is jump number two. It's your fifth seed here, getting down to the business end of this preliminary round. And a much better looking jump number two. All right, and we have a distance there on jump number two for Stanislava. That is 43.8 meters, 144 feet. So putting her comfortably into the jump finals here with one jump remaining. All right, so uh, we've got Josefina uh, coming into the course. Uh, this is going to be 14.25 meters. And 
All right, here we go. Stanislava coming in. This is jump number three. Another nice looking jump number three. So just waiting on a distance on jump number three for the Ukrainian coming in. She's got to be happy with that jump set. Smiling, waving at the crowd a little bit as she skis back to the dock. And 46 meters even. So not quite putting her into the lead. Augustina Varis holding on with 46.5 meters but followed closely by Stanislava Rosvitova with 46 meters even. All right, so the boat going to pick up our next gear in this jumping event for under 21 women. This is Ginevra Buonapane out of Italy. She is your fourth seed, I believe, yes, in this jumping event. So definitely capable of pushing out those distances further. Another skier taking that three-quarter cut approach as we see this shift from five foot to five and a half. Some of these girls opting to take a less aggressive cut. And a nice right away jump for Ginevra. So looking at the replay here, maybe just a little bit early on jump number one, but still really able to press out over her skis and get a good distance coming in. waiting for a distance on jump number one. All right, so Ginevra coming in. This is jump number two. Haven't heard a distance yet for jump number one for her. But let's look and see what she does here on jump number two. Ginevra coming in. Nice right away jump. 
very consistent. So Ginevra coming back down the lake after jump number two. Just waiting for some distances here. Okay, so jump number one was 146 feet, 44.5 meters, and jump number two was 49.1 meters, 161 feet. So pushing her into the lead and pushing out that score over 160 feet, that's a huge distance. We've only seen a number of scores over 150 thus far so definitely pushing out there pushing it out there and putting a little bit of pressure on the rest of your skiers off the dock so let's see what she does here on jump number three Ginevra Puanapane out of Italy Really good looking jump number three. May even push out her distance a little further. Just have to wait and see. Really driving through the base of the ramp. You can see as she holds her direction coming off of the top. All right, so Ginevra heading back down the lake. She's guaranteed herself a spot in the finals and a fairly high seed in the finals. Could even be top seed, depending on how your next three skiers do. You've got Perrine Saunier representing France. Inez Anguinat, also representing Fan France, and your top seed, Brooke Baldwin, still yet to go. So 153 feet, 46.5 meters there on jump number two for Ginevra. So she's going to stick with that 49.1, 161 feet. She's on track for number four, Dern Course. Oh, my word. She's round buoy number five. Can she make this? This is 12 meters. Boom. Wow. Good, good skin. I tell you what. You want to talk about aggressive. This was the best game she's had in this whole set. And you'll see how long that she gives that good start. And, you know, she, she's after that 28 off pass, she came out and attacked her. She's looking good. Um, definitely takes the lead. All right, so the boat going to pick up Perrine Saunier out of France and bring her in for jump number one. A little bit of a pressure, a little bit of pressure after Ginevra putting out a 49.1 meter score. Let's see what she does here. Your first five and a half foot jumper to take a double cut approach. Sonia coming in. Jump number one. Pretty late approach there on jump number one. Getting up and over. We'll wait for the distance. Six inches 
make up on each turn. Entrance gates number one. Takes a big old hit and half a buoy at 11.25 meters is your So yeah, just that maybe a couple of timing timing issues to work out yeah, here as she comes back down the lake getting ready for jump number two. These girls, if you're just tuning in here towards the end of this women's series one jump prelim event, these skiers get three attempts to push out their score as far as possible. And we are taking the top 12 into the finals right now. So really sorting out what we're assuming are the top spots as these are your top seeds. Just waiting for a distance here on jump number one for Perrine. That was 125 feet, so definitely not the jump she was looking for on jump number one. Quite a bit of work to do as she comes back in for jump number two. This is Son Sonye or Perrine Sonye. Another nice attempt on jump number two, maybe just lacking a bit of the aggressiveness that we saw out of a couple of our prior jumpers. So just waiting for a distance here for Perrine on her second jump. 125 feet on jump number one, so definitely quite a bit of work to do. So 40.3 meters on jump number two, putting her into the seventh position. So that pretty much guarantees her a spot in the finals. with one jump remaining. Here we go, Perrine Sonye coming in. Yeah, this yeah, is jump number three, hooking the 600 buoy on her double cut approach. Trying to improve on that 40.3 meter score right now. Slipping out just a little bit on the jump. Not sure if that is gonna be a better attempt for her. Just have to wait and see the distance. Definitely can tell she's giving it her all out there. Just letting up maybe a little bit on the base of the jump and slipping. So still waiting for a distance. Her score right now is 40.3 meters, 132 feet. As she comes back down the lake. All right, and 40.9 meters. So upping that score just a little bit. As we head into the top two seeds here in this under 21 women's jump preliminary round. France representing strong with two of with two of your three top three seeds. And a lot of crossover from U17 to U21 
2021 in this particular series as uh, both of those uh, championships have been held at the same flat, the same venue. Beautifully executed down the wide and just... Not much uh, change in speed so right now in the lead we have Ginevra Buonopane out of Italy with 49.1 meters, followed by Agustina Varis, 46.5 meters, Stanislava Prosvetova, 46.0 meters, Paige Rini, 44.6 meters, Kennedy Hansen, 43.5, Shay O'Brien, 43.5 as well, and Perrine Sonier with 40.9. Charlie Newman with 40.3. Emily Wenzel with 39.1. Pia Mattersdorfer with 38.9. And Courtney Williams also with 38.9. That rounds out your top 10. And we are taking 12 into the finals. So Lily Mead right now, or that's your top 11, excuse me. Lily Mead right now on the bubble in your 12th spot with 38.6 meters. as if your memories have always been here, just waiting for you to find them. All it takes is a little exploration. The place is both wild and more fun. There's a togetherness in this, as if you're tied to something greater, knowing there's so much left to discover. South Walls in Florida. Find your perfect beach. Hello, Natalia Vernikava here, Mark's Pole World Champion, World Records Holder, introducing the new Edge Trick Binding. 3D printed plate creates for more control and support on the water. Plus, this binding is very unique because we have two options. Option one with toe clamp and heel clamp dedicated specifically for hands. Option two with the releasable plate could be used for hands and toes. And the binding suits for all levels. For the upcoming season, it's time to get on Edge. everyone to explore freely in search of the next great moment because sometimes the deepest memories come from just below the surface south walton florida find your perfect beach in south walton florida it's almost as if your memories have always been here just waiting for you to find them all it takes is a little exploration south walton florida find your perfect beach Shoot. 
Gonzalez, right? We've just seen her go through uh, the opening two passes of, uh, yeah, that's 16. I believe this is 14.25. All right, we're back with your top two seeds in this women's jump preliminary round. This is Inez Anguino representing France. Corinne Sonier, having just went, also representing France. Now Inez up and on the water. This is jump number one. Here we go, Inez opting for that three quarter cut approach, just hooking the 600 buoy. So these girls definitely taking some more aggressive cuts as we get into the top couple skiers. And a nice looking jump number one for Inez. I'm not sure if that will challenge our leader right now. Which is Ginevra Buono Payne with 49.1 meters. It was an offside turn as well. Yeah, you can tell she didn't hit the, you know, her reach into one just like she did at three and five. So, she, so I think that three ball turn is more like a little turn here. She kind of hops off the handle, pushes it, and really brings the handle back into her inside hip, um, which didn't make this a turn as well. But then here she goes outside hip, and then you'll see if she looks more confident in three. So Inez getting some co coaching and cheering there from Team France. She's coming in. That is 41.5, I'm sorry, Inez. 41.5 meters on jump number one. So securing her spot in the finals. Sorry, I believe this is Elena Ahamer coming in, going a little bit out of order here. So that was her first jump. And a good looking jump number two for Elena. So 136 feet, 41.4 meters on jump number two for Elena. So she has her spot in the finals, probably just trying to make a little bit more of an aggressive cut and push out that score a bit further. So we're taking 12 skiers into the finals in this event. And right now we're down to the top three. So kind of sorting everything out. I would expect some big distances from these ladies. Forty-one point four meters. Jump number two will not challenge her forty-one point five. So sticking with that score as she comes in for jump number three. Elena Ahamer. Slipping a little bit on jump number three there, but still able to get up and over her skis 
have a right away jump. I'm not sure if that'll challenge her 41.5 meter score, but we'll have to wait and see the distance. All right, so she did push her score out a little further with 42.5 meters. It's 139 feet. So great skiing for Elena. All right, so we're, we're now picking up Inez and Guino. And she is your second seed. Apologies for the confusion before, but now she is about to be up and on the water. All right, here we go. Inez coming in. This is jump number one. Taking a three-quarter cut approach. So Inez representing Team France. A nice looking jump number one, maybe just a tad bit early. She'll have two more jumps to kind of work out any timing or technical issues really hone in a good score for her heading into the finals. But we'll wait and see the distance here on jump number one. All right, so 40.4 meters, 133 feet for Inez. That does guarantee her a spot in the finals. Now just kind of trying to work out placement. So Inez going into your ninth spot. Right, here we go, Inez coming back in for jump number two. And with that score, that does put Pia Mattersdorfer and Courtney Williams on your bubble spot. They're tied right now with 38.9 meters. Let's watch Inez as she comes in for jump number two, representing France. Maybe just a little bit early on that jump as well. Not quite able to get out everything she can off the top of the jump. But she already has her spot in the finals. So I would say just taking some safe jumps and trying to up her score that way would be the best course of action. Is she aspires to take the lead at this time? She needs to run through 12 meters, takes a good start snap off. I'm sure she would like to better her score a little bit and put her placement higher going into the finals though. 
So 43.3 meters on jump number two. That pushes her up a little bit. Inez, your second seed out on the water right now. Here we go. Inez coming in. Jump number three. 43.3 meter score in the books. Can she push that out a little further here on jump number three? Let's watch and see. Right, another nice jump for Inez. Maybe still a little bit early, but she could have pushed that score out a little bit there. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, just coming out off of that top left hand corner. So she has a 43.3 meter score right now. We're waiting to see if she can push that a little further with one jumper remaining. Right now, Ginevra Guanopane leading with a score of 49.1 meters. All right, and 43.5 feet. So upping our score by two tenths of a meter there on jump number two. Great skiing for Inez. And the boat's coming in to pick up your top seed in this under 21 women's jump preliminary event. This is Brooke Baldwin. All right, here we go. Your top seed, Brooke Baldwin, is up and on the water. Brooke, a junior at the University of Alabama, lives and skis in the Orlando area. Brooke, really a beast of an overall skier, and she's out on the jump lake right now trying to get a good score for the final jump event and for her overall score. A nice looking jump number one, very clean and easy. I'd say she just guaranteed herself a spot in the finals. Even though that is unconfirmed, that's a pretty good bet to place your money on. Just a really great looking jump for Brooke. So Brooke jumping 49.1 meters, 161 feet, tying your first spot, but showing slow times. So not sure if she will get a re-ride or not for that. We'll have to wait and see. But coming out on jump number one and getting it done, Brooke Baldwin. 
And so judges deem that score okay. The 161 will hold. So 49.1 meters. That ties her in meters with Ginevra Buonopane for your top spot going into the finals. Brooke Baldwin coming in. This is jump number two. So really coming out and getting it done. And on a three-quarter cut, too, you'll see a lot of these girls opting for a double, but Brooke really able to get that width and speed, even with a little bit easier cut. Oh, slipping out a little bit on jump number two. Probably not going to be the 49.1 meters that jump number one was. But still a pretty decent jump for Brooke. So Brooke, definitely predominantly known for her slalom skiing. One of the top skiers in the world, but I mean, just com a completely amazing overall skier. All right, 151 feet for jump number two. Brooke Baldwin, her 161 foot score will hold for right now with one jump remaining. 45.9 meters there on jump number two. Oh, well, yeah. If I was good at it. All right, Brooke Baldwin coming in. This is jump number two, your top seed. Currently tied for the lead right now with 49.1 meters. Let's see what she does here on jump number three. Nice looking jump for Brooke. I'm not sure if it was 161 feet, 49.1 meters, but just have to wait and see. She's definitely guaranteed her the top spot in the finals. So just waiting for a distance as Brooke skis back down the lake. But really amazing skiing. I know she made it into the trick finals as well. She's getting ready to jump. 49.2 meters. So pushing out her lead by one-tenth of a meter, Brooke Baldwin. Nice skiing. So we've sorted out our leaderboard here, going into the finals, taking the top 12 skiers. In 12th spot, we have Emily Wenzel, then Charles C. Newman, Perrine Sonier, Elena Ahammer, Shea O'Brien, Kennedy Hansen, Inez Anguinot, Paige Rini, Stanislava Prozvitova, Agustina Varis, Ginevra Buonopane, and Brooke Baldwin rounding out that leaderboard as we sorted through the skiers making it into the final in under 21 women's jump. Congratulations to all of those ladies, and we'll see them again tomorrow.
get through these slums here as one by one very, very quickly. And at the same time, we still have uh, jumpers on about to take to the water who will ski or jump first. And then less than half an hour or 45 minutes later, they could find themselves out in the water slowly. Yeah, and I mean, that, that's unfortunate because you know, we weren't playing on that, but the one thing about these, these, you know, these athletes, they've been training hard on, you know, the past two years, and they, uh, you, know, you don't just ski once a day, you ski multiple times a day, and so it's, it's nothing that these athletes haven't done before. They haven't gone and jumped, and then, you know, an hour later, decided they're going to go to the So, uh, you know, as, as bad as that, that does kind of stink, it's kind of going to do that. I don't think Good on you, thank you. Well done, appreciate it. Jeez, do I have to have that? I might put that down though. Can't see the TV though. <laughs> oh, am I watching this? Violetta Mikulski right now from Argentina. This is the 60 meter line. Oh, very aggressive at the end of these turns. Almost a little bit too aggressive uh, for my liking, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll see what transpires. It's going to go to the 6 3 past their thing. Yeah, I kind of agree with you, Tony. She did come out a little bit over hand. Um, you can see her settle down on the last one turn. We'll look here in the replay as she makes her way around the run. Really drops in on it, and I think she loaded up a little bit heavier than she wanted. But um, you know, she made her way through it. That's okay. She'll put that behind her. And then... Okay. Apparently, looks like the jump is done. So far as the uh, the women are concerned, they're going to go into the men's jump. Then uh, taking over the uh, the commentary. There is going to be. Sometimes, the deepest memories come from just below the surface. You can taste it, see it, hear it. The sensations come back in great rushes, or gentle brush strokes. They feel familiar, welcoming, inspiring everyone to explore freely, in search of the next great moment. South Walton, Florida. Find your perfect beach.
good there for Violetta. That is 13 meters. Um, yeah, but between Doc Starters and Adam Doc Starting, Ariel, and what power factory you're running? I can't see. Okay, thank you. Uh, Kelvin, am I on now? It's Glenn here, mate. Uh, can I start commentating jump? Okay, welcome along, folks. Uh, this is, of course, men's jump elimination rounds now. We've got uh, we've already had series four a couple of hours ago, but we are now into the series three, two, and one. So the twenty, I think there's twenty-two of the best uh, men's under twenty-one jumpers in the world looking for the top 12 finals so we've got our first competitor from Italy of course who is uh, young Vicenia we just passes that one jump number one lets it go so Vicenzo Marino from Italy will be our first male jumper up That's right, looking at Violetta right now Mikulski. this is 12 meters oh she gets on the back of the ski it looks like it's going to be um, what is it, two and a half, I would say, 2.5 at uh, 12 meters for uh, Violetta Mikulski. And uh, just getting in a, a little bit deep on the opening part of uh, 12 meters there, Zane. Yeah, and this is kind of where being super strong out of the turn, I'm kind of catching because she really hit the gate super hard and then catches her over here and too ball. Takes her a little down and then she gets slack. Yeah, so a pass on uh, jump number one from Italy. So uh, we have got, uh, folks, we've got 12 skiers in this field that have been over 60 metres. So you would think that our, our cut to make the final should be somewhere up in the high 50s. Maybe not quite 60, but it should be up around that 57, 58 metre mark, I would think, to make this under 21 men's jump final. Plenty going on here, of course. We've got uh, Series 1 slalom going uh, on Lake 2. We're on Lake One here watching the jump event. Uh, we have a hurricane coming, folks, unfortunately, which is meant to hit on Sunday. So we're looking to get these worlds wrapped up by Saturday night, which, of course, is tomorrow here in Florida. And this will be jump number two from the Italian. He passed on jump one, Senso Marino. The big uh, Nautique pulls him out on the three-quarter cut. He's the only jumper in this uh, elimination seeding off a five-foot ramp. So once he's had his set, we'll put the jump up to five and a half. And the remaining 21 jumpers will uh, go off five and a half. So pass on jump one. This jump looks to be a little bit better here as he uh, makes his way onto the ramp. Just makes it on the corner. Decent sort of lift. And as soon as we'll get a score, we'll let you know. Conditions are excellent at the moment uh, as we're running through this jump seating. 42.4, 42.4 is the distance on jump number two for uh, Vicenzo. Yeah, conditions are pretty good. We did spin the ramp, of course, uh, yesterday because uh, the winds, says this hurricane makes landfall uh, under the panhandle here in uh, the United States. The winds are going to be from the east which means that we had to spin the ramp so we could get a headwind, but right now there isn't actually a heck of a lot of wind. Maybe a slight sort of a crosswind. Okay, third and final now. Jump number three. Vicenzo Marino. Of 
Another tidy jump. Uh, he's possibly a little bit disappointed, I think, on jump number three. But a good tidy set in the end. Passed his first one, but the next two jumps were solid enough. Around that 45 metre mark, I think, uh, if I had to guess. Great shot, of course, from TWBC from the side of the ramp there, the top uh, left-hand corner. Just see how late these uh, guys are when they come flying into that uh, big red jump ramp. That actually puts him in the lead so far in the jump. Uh, the best jump before was our Colombian athlete, uh, Sebastian uh, Calindo, who went 41.7 uh, earlier on in Series 4. We've also had Andrew Boskus from the United States uh, with a 41.6. Alexandra Horosko from the Ukraine, 40.6. Alexander Menzel of Germany, 38.2. Simon Oldman from uh, Sweden was 32.8. And the Ukrainian, Ivan Choyny, 31.3. So those are our jump scores so far. We've had Series 4. We've just begun Series 3. And uh, we have got something like about 22 more jumpers to come. Uh, and as I said, about 12 of them have personal bests over 60 metres. So we're going to have some big jumps, uh, some big 200-foot jumps yet to come. It's almost as if your memories have always been here. Just waiting for you to find it. All it takes is a little exploration. The place is both wild and refined. There's a togetherness in this. As if you're tied to something greater. Knowing there's so much left to discover. South Walls in Florida. Find your perfect beach. Just a, just a slight delay while we put the ramp uh, up, of course. Uh, we're done with our five-foot jumpers in the men's elimination round. So the rest of our competitors will be off the five-and-a-half-foot jump under 21 men's elimination. Next competitor will be young... Uh, Vicente Tiza out of Chile, just a young 14-year-old. Super uh, solid uh, athlete with a lovely jump style. You see uh, the great Rodrigo Miranda, of course, one of the Chilean team coaches there, just uh, talking to him. The boat will do a couple of uh, one phantom pass up and back, up the back of the lake, come back down. Just to keep the wave pattern, of course, the same for all our competitors. There you go. Picture of the commentary team here on the webcast, of course. I'm Glenn Williams. I'm looking after the uh, jump lake. We've got Zane Nicholson and Tony Lightfoot doing the slalom elimination round for the seed two and one of the ladies. So it's all happening here as we try and push through this tournament a little bit using both two of the three lakes here at Kerry Picos's. Some talk of a hurricane coming. I'm yet to see it, though. I think it's going to make landfall a little bit to the west of uh, Florida, but still create enough wind on Sunday that uh, it's not going to be a lot of fun skiing. So we're going to try and get all the skiing done by tomorrow night and uh, leave Sunday alone, be done and dusted. Now, 
Next competitor up, coming to you from Great Britain, it's going to be Katie Knott. Accelerated 55k. It's a 14.25 meter start. Skier for the University of Louisiana at Monroe. This is Katie Knott. Okay, so this young lad from Chile, of course, uh, jumped uh, Vicente Tiza. He jumped uh, 50 metres, I think it was, or 49.8 to 50 metres. Just a shade off 50 metres in the under-17 boys. Be interesting to see whether he's uh, put his speed up at all. Possibly not. Uh, just a youngster, only about 14 years of age. Probably going to leave his speed at 51 kilometres per hour here. There's no need to be crazy about this uh, the young fellow. So she's a pretty quick run in here. You go straight off the dock, whipped around the island. And uh, if you're doing a double, like I'm sure Vicente is, you've got to pull straight out on that Nautic towboat. It's not a lot of time for adjusting, uh, adjusting yourself, making sure slapping your feet into the bindings or anything like that. You've just got to get straight into your work, jumping uh, this way here at Corey Picos's. And here he goes. Good solid turn. Young man with a big future in the sport. He lets that one go. Not happy with his timing. Because these guys have had no Famil facing this way with the ramp. They have uh, Familed for some of them for months here at Picos Lake. And the ramp has always been facing towards the west because it is normally a westerly breeze in the evenings or the afternoons here at Picos's. And uh, the, what's changed here, of course, is this impending hurricane, which is pushing the breeze towards the east or from the east. Okay, jump number two about to come up now for Vicente Tiza out of uh, Chile. So the boat uh, makes its way right past the start target. He has a quick chat with uh, Rodrigo Miranda. There's a young Chilean getting some last-minute advice. I'm sure the Mirandas, I'm sure Pepe Miranda is down by the jump ramp coaching, and Rodrigo, of course, is on the dock. It's a, it's a one-two punch from the Chilean team management and two of the great professional jumpers looking after this young Chilean team. Here he is now, Vicente Teaser, jump number two. Right out in front of that uh, Nautique towboat. Makes his turn for the ramp. Into the ramp he goes. Oh, lovely stuff off the top. Great jump. Uh, rides that one away. So he's got a score on the board, and I wouldn't be surprised if he's our new leader, folks. Current lead was sitting around that uh, 44 metre mark in this jump event. I've got a feeling we've got a new leader. Forty nine point three metres. You can see it up on your screen, folks. Forty nine point three, that's our new leader in the under twenty one men's jump elimination round. Young Chilean with a big future in the sport. We saw the Chilean team uh, finish second to the US in the team's event in the under seventeens. And four of the six Chilean team members uh, will once again be in the under seventeens in two years' time at home in Chile. So they're a very uh, formidable team coming through, the Chileans. Chilean water skiing is uh, no longer still all about the Mirandas, although the Mirandas, of course, are heavily involved in uh, both hosting events and coaching this team. But there's uh, some more Chilean families coming to the forefront. Third and final now for Vicente Teaser from Chile. 
Good strong uh, lean in here. He lets it go. Passes it up. He's going to have to live with his 49.7 uh, meter effort. Yeah, so 49.3 is the biggest jump from Vicente, and that is the lead at the moment. Okay, next competitor will be uh, Dominic Kuhn from uh, Austria. I saw this guy skiing under 17s as well, a solid uh, performer. Didn't quite make that under 17 jump final though, I don't believe. Okay, here we go. Third competitor in Series 2, sorry, Series 3 of uh, Under-21 Men's Jump Elimination Round. And is Dominic Kuhn out of Austria. He's going to do the three-quarter cut, not opting for the double. It's a little bit scary, the double cut straight off the dock here. If uh, he never jumped this way, Picos, very little running. But we've still seen some great jumping uh, so far from the girls and the boys and the men so far today. Jump number one, into the ramp he goes and he passes and we've seen that a lot. Most of our competitors uh, today have passed on their first jump. Just struggling with no Famil running this way I guess. Struggling a little bit to get their timing. Even the skiers that have uh, that train here at Corey's, and then there is a lot of them, a heck of a lot of the competitors of these worlds, either call Picos as their home or they've been training here for two, a couple of months, and uh, they've struggled a little bit with their timing uh, jumping that way today. So as we take uh, Dominique back uh, down towards the start dock for his second jump, he'll make the turn and head in for a second jump. We know that our lead is with Chile with 49.3 metres to Vicente Teaser. Italian uh, Vicenzo Marino with 43.1 is in second. And then Colombian Sebastian Calando is uh, 41.7. So that's our top three at the moment. I'm expecting the distance to make the final to be closer to... 60, I think probably around that 57 or 58 metres. Here we go now. Dominic Kuhn, Dominic Kuhn from Austria. Now jump number two. Three-quarter cut. The power of the Nautique pulls him out uh, wide and into the course. Makes his turn into the ramp. He goes just back a bit on his lift there. Solid enough, but back on his lift, of course. Not sure that that's going to be uh, anywhere near our lead. It's possibly uh, around that low to mid 40s in distance. We'll have to wait and see. Very 
very stylish skier up to this time. Let's see if she can uh, put some of the great technique. 42.4. 42.4 is the distance for Dominic Kuhn. Second jump. He's got one to come. The Chilean Vicente Teaser hangs on with 49.3. Of course, that's 162 feet. So 162 feet leads this event for Vincent Teaser of Chile. Looking on the dock now, we've got the long blonde locks of Benjamin Turp out of Great Britain, of course. Turp family here. I think Matilda, younger sister Matilda is skiing as well. Here we go, third and final. Forty-two point four in a second. He's going to need a bit more here. See if he can't get up around forty-five on jump number three. Here we go, jump number three. Oh, he's done a similar. It's a carbon copy, really. Back on his skis off the top. Loses a bit of distance out there. Not sure he'll be super happy with that set. Just rocks back on his heels as he comes off the top. If you're just joining us on the webcast, I know uh, Basically, if this is some countries are in the world, it's fairly early in the morning. I know in New Zealand, I think it's getting close to 9 a.m. in the morning. Uh, Australia, of course, Eastern Seaboard, Australia, be 7 a.m. Obviously, here in the U.S., it's uh, a little bit after 3 p.m., 3.26 p.m. here in this part of Florida, anyway, 4.26 p.m. in Orlando. 44 metres on jut number three for Dominique Kuhn. That gives him uh, a piece of second at the moment. He's got himself into second. Of course, uh, Vicente Teaser, the young 14-year-old Chilean, still leads with Okay, Benjamin Turp out of uh, Great Britain. Great to have the Turp family joining us here in the Santa Rosa Beach, Florida, for these uh, under-21 and under-17 World Championships. Here we go, jump number one, Benjamin Turp, around the island that he goes, he's straight into his work, three-quarter cut, he's a little bit narrow here, see if he's got himself late enough, he, you know, he lets himself go, lets the handle go, passes the ramp, and uh, like uh, many skiers before, I'm struggling a bit for his timing straight off the dock here, he'll sure he'll get it together on the second one. Shot down at the start dock of our next competitor in the Sun of 21 men's jump, uh, Vermeer, sorry, Demir Fluratov, the Ukrainian. Our next competitor is Benjamin Turp. Makes his way back down towards the start dock. He's had one jump, he's passed it, he's got two to come. Pretty sure it's gonna hit. 
got say hot neck around there, we've got a high reactivity around the dock side, we've still got about six minutes to go after the, uh, the end of uh, this series, which is series two. I think we've got in our situation with the, uh, with the ladder uh, women in series two. Okay, here we go, jump number two for Benjamin Turp from Great Britain, he passed on the first. Current lead is 49.3, 162 feet with the young Chilean Vicente Teaser. Let's see what Benjamin Turp can come up with here. Up and over the ramp he goes. Solid enough jump there. Didn't really push out over his skis, but still a good uh, one to get on the board. He's got a score on the board now. Okay, we'll have that distance through in a minute or in a second, I'm sure, for uh, Benjamin Turp. 46.7, that's a decent sort of a jump off a light three, a lightest three-quarter cut. So that puts him in second spot at the moment, Benjamin Turp, the young Brit. Still leading the Chilean, of course, Vicente Tiza with his 49.3 metre effort. So that jump in, uh, in old money, 153 feet. So if you're watching from the United States, Benjamin Tips jump there, 153 feet. But the lead is 162 feet. So he's nine feet off the lead, which is held by Chilean Vicente Teza. Here we go. Three quarter cut, he pulls out uh, as wide as he can. Makes his turn, he's got a bit of speed here. Can he get some lift? Oh, solid jump. Possibly a little bit further, I think, on jump number three. Took a while to get into his work. He struggled a bit with his timing early on, but as he got through this set, he seemed to improve. Wait for the distance to see if it gets up anywhere near the lead, of course, which is 49.3. Ah, 46.4, so it's a little bit less, in fact. So 46.7 is second jump, which was 153 feet, is the best of the day for Benjamin Turp from Great Britain. He heads back towards the starting dock. Next competitor will be the young Ukrainian, Demir Flaratov. Another lovely warm day here in Florida. This uh, beautiful day, really. It's uh, not lovely and warm. Very little breeze. Hard to believe we've got a hurricane breathing down our neck, but I'm sure those those of that are used to the hurricanes here, they know that uh, there's always a calm before the storm. Okay, young Ukrainian, just uh, 16 years of age, out of uh, that wonderful Ukrainian water ski program, of course, uh, Demir Flaratov, wonderful trick skier. Here we go, full double cut, right off the dock. Makes his turn into the ramp, he goes, does he take his first one? Yes, he does. Just uh, slips out a little and he's on his heels. Still he gets one on the board. Most of these guys have passed on the first, but he was happy enough with his position 
on jump number one that he took it, and that's good to see. Watch the replay here. Probably slightly early, I'm not sure, but I think he probably can bring it down a little bit further on jump number two. We'll get the distance. 40 metres, 40 metres flat from the Mia Flariatoff. So the lead is still with Chile. It is Vicente Tiza, the 14-year-old out of for Chile. He's leading with 49.3 metres, 162 feet. Okay, here we go. Jump number two now. This looks a little bit later. He's working hard, the young Ukrainian, and he gets off the top. That is a sensational jump. Much bigger distance, I'm sure, on jump number two. Had a bit more width, a bit more speed, and he booted that uh, big jump ramp. And i got a feeling that will be up, uh, well, I think it'll be up close to 50 on that one. Definitely high 40s. Soared right up above the pine trees here at uh, Picos Water Ski Centre. Wait for the distance. Very, Look at this cut. Just ski. makes it on very, the corner. Low to the ski by comparison to a lot of our other competitors. Fifty-one point five meters. We've got a new leader in the men's jump, folks. What a great jump from the Ukrainian. 51.5 meters. Wow, what a what a great jump! He's taken the lead off uh, off uh, Vicente Tiza of Chile, who had 49.3, and the Ukrainian leads the under 21 men's jump elimination round. Plenty of jumpers to come, of course, and we believe the cut will be up around that 57, 58 meters. But that is an absolute ripper from this young Ukrainian, just 16 years of age. Shot of Charlie uh, Westland on the dock from Sweden because his dad Jimmy on the dock with him, a former junior world uh, bronze medalist in 88. Uh, Jimmy Westland from Sweden took out the bronze medal there at the 88 junior worlds and now his son Charlie of course competing here at the under 70. Oh geez, he's come off the corner a little bit here, the young Ukraine, he's going to be fine. They're going to have to... Uh, Pull out a chainsaw though and trim some trees, branches to find him. I think he's right into the bushes, but uh, just I think maybe he thought he was a bit late and he let that one go. Still, it's a great set. Let's have a look at the replay here. Into the ramp he comes. He's working hard off the side of the ramp. Gets a bit of a bit of a boost. He's lost the handle at this stage, but he's passed up late. He's come off the corner and he is uh, headed in towards the trees here at. Uh, Picos, but I'm sure he's absolutely fine. We're saying that the cut line is going to be, I'm, pro, I'm predicting it's going to be around about three. We've lost sight of him, but I got a feeling that he pulled up just short of those trees, folks. So I think he's going to be okay. We've got Corey Picos heading in there with a chainsaw to cut a track to get him out of the trees. 51.5 will be Demir Flaritov's best. He's taken the lead in this event off the Chilean, who's, uh, of course, Vicente Teaser of the 49.3. So there we go, 169 feet leads the under-21 men's jump elimination round. Our next competitor, we go to Sweden, is Charlie Westland. Because uh, had a couple of weeks training there at uh, Ski Fluid with a great Kai lead. I had the pleasure of getting to drive the boat a couple of times for this young man. He's an absolute up-and-coming superstar out of... Uh, out of Sweden, more of a slalomer than a jumper, but just missed out on that slalom final, unfortunately, in the under-17s and the under-21s. You can see his dad, Jimmy, of course, as I said, 
bronze medalist at the 1988 uh, World uh, Water Ski Champs, Junior World Water Ski Champs. So it's great to see the Swedes uh, a bit of intergenerational intergener uh, skiing. Okay, here comes Charlie Westland for the uh, three-quarter cut. Jump number one, representing Sweden. Just uh, lets that one go. It's quite been quite common this uh, afternoon in this jump for uh, these skiers to pass on their first jump. Taking a little bit of time to get used to the different setup here at Picos. So pass on jump number one for Charlie Westland. So uh, he's got two more to come, of course. Currently, of course, you're watching the jump event on Lake One, under 21 men's jump elimination. We've got the under 21 women's slalom elimination being ran, run on Lake Two. That's uh, on the webcast number two if you uh, want to check it out for a bit but Tony Lightfoot and Zane Nicholson are taking you through that uh, event but here on Lake One the Ukrainian Demir Flaratov leads this uh, under 21 jump elimination round you see uh, Martin Labra there briefly on the start dock and here's Charlie Weston. He's going past the start talk. A few words of wisdom from his dad and coach, of course, Jimmy. And third, or oh, sorry, second jump coming up now. Really needs to get a score on the board. He doesn't want to leave it till the third and final. Here we go. Needs to get over this one, get a score on the board. Into the ramp he goes, he's up and over. Yeah, tidy opening jump. Also, he didn't really get the full pull cut right through the ramp. He's got a score on the board nonetheless. He's got his eye in, he's got one jump to come. go from jump cam to get an idea of how lady was into the ramp not too bad fairly comfortable a couple of feet uh, left of uh, the corner how far is it 43.2 from Charlie Westland Charlie Westland now, jump number three. We see the uh, figure on the start dock of Martin Labra, that young superstar from Chile. He's up next, so uh, there's plenty of action to come. Series three of under 21 men's jump. Good morning if you're just waking up in my part of the world, New Zealand or Australia, enjoying, uh, enjoying this coverage. Here he is, the young Swede. Into the ramp he comes. I think that might be a little bit further. He seemed like he might have had a bit more speed. On jump number three, young Charlie Westland out of uh, Sweden. Here we 
go, Perrine Saunier. It's waiting on that distance, shouldn't be long folks, we'll have a distance. Jump number three for Charlie Westland. And uh, it is going to be 42 metres flat. Just a little shot there on the dock. I love this stuff. Uh, Rodrigo Miranda is on the phone. And I'll tell you who he's on the phone to. He's not on the phone uh, ordering pizza. He's on the phone to his brother, Pepe Miranda, who is standing down by the jump ramp. And he will be relaying information about the conditions down there at the jump ramp for this young superstar. Martin Labra is up next. The uh, world overall under-17 champion from uh, this week and also a new pending under-17 world overall record. Tricked 11,000 points, ran a couple at uh, 11.25 or 38 off and jumped around that 54 metre mark, around that uh, one, uh, maybe not quite 180 feet uh, in this event. See Mario Pagosi there, of course. Well, many regard the world's number one uh, Slalom driver, but it's not far off uh, being number one in jump as well, uh, taking the wheel. Busy the drivers this week, of course, with the two lakes running simultaneously. They've uh, been fairly busy, the drivers, you'd have to say. And here's Martin Labra. What a young super superstar this boy is. It's so exciting to watch this guy ski. He's uh, full double cut. Makes his uh, turn just inside, uh, just before the 600 football, out wide in the Nautique tow boat. Martin Labra from Chile. He's going to have a good turn here. He slams, he goes. He's got plenty of speed. Can he get up over the ramp? Uh, he's not happy with the timing. He just lets it go. So pass on jump number one. That's not unusual. We've had a bit of that here today. Just struggling a little bit because uh, Martin... Would spend a lot of time here training at Corey Picos's with uh, the Miranda brothers, but uh, doesn't uh, get to jump with the ramp this way very often. I understand it's uh, not faced this way all summer. I guess in some ways it uh, levels the field a little bit, the advantage of uh, having th two, three months training here. Two or, th two or three months training here at Picos's is not so much when, we're, when the jump ramp turns around if it's moved to a different place kind of levels it out a little bit the guys that have just got off a plane come straight here with uh, no training uh, on site have got it a little bit uh, of more of a level playing field I guess you could say on the dock next to go will be our first competitor in series two it was uh, Garrett Reese, of course, out of uh, California, Northern California. So this is our last jumper in Series 3. Then we go into Series 2 of jump. This is effectively a seeded order. So uh, as we go, each jumper is going to jump a little bit further. Current leader, of course, is still uh, the Ukrainian, Demir Flaratov, with a 51.5. Here he is, Martin Labra from Chile, the under-17 world trick and overall champion, competing in the under-21 men's jump elimination round. He's trying to get into the final. He passed on his first. He's got a bit of work to do here on jump number two. All looks pretty good at the moment, and up and over he goes. And that is a great jump. Bit of a wave to the uh, crowd, maybe not quite happy. Oh, he hasn't ridden it away, though. He's not landed that jump, folks, and that's devastation for Martin Labra. Devastation for the Chilean team and fans. It's all going to come down to a third and final. I'm not quite sure what happened here. He seemed to have a reasonably good one off the top. Looked to be a fairly decent distance. Coming down to land. He's got one hand. He puts the other hand. Like maybe losing a bit of balance there as he throws that other left hand up in the air. And then lands in the water. Probably needs to stand up here. He's got slack rope. You got if you got slack rope, you got to stand up. I'm thinking uh, of a young guy I've got a lot of time for back home in the Waikato in New Zealand, uh, Hunter McKenzie. He gets told that a lot on his jumps. You got to use those ab muscles and get yourself up on those skis, don't you, before that rope comes tight. Shout out to Hunter. I'm not sure what he's doing. He might be playing rugby today back in New Zealand, but if he's at home watching, then uh, Martin Labra 
needs to go to the Hunter McKenzie coaching school of uh, landing jumps. So, uh, zero on the score. We've got a pass and a fall for this Chilean superstar. This is somewhat of an upset. The Chilean team will be scrambling because Martin Labra actually has a shot in the overall as well. He really does. He won the under-17 overall. He's got to land this jump, folks, or he's out of the overall race. This is a big moment coming up. At least, uh, if not the favourite in the under-21 overall, he's definitely looking towards a podium finish. So he must land this jump. This is a massive moment coming up in the under-21 world champs. Plenty of tension on the dock. The collective uh, knowledge of the Miranda brothers doing whatever they can to help this young man into getting a score on the board. The hopes and dreams of a, the great nation of Chile are riding on this one. Jump number three, Martin Labra, one of the favourites in the overall. He's got zero. He needs to land this jump. He needs to get a score on the board. Here we go. Makes his turn. Can he get onto the ramp? That's the first time. He can't afford to pass. He's up. He's over. He's looking okay. Down he goes. Does he land it? Yes, he does. Away he goes. And he's got a score on the board. So heart in the mouth stuff for the Chilean team. I'm not sure how far it is, but uh, at least he's still in the game when it comes to overall. Big moment uh, in the Sun of 21 jump event. Wow. Good landing there. Bit of a bird flying around there. I'm sure it was miles away from him. And there's no way he's asking for a rewrite anyway on that jump because he's got the score on the board. Have a look at the cut here. Right on the corner. Not the best jump he's had all week, but he doesn't care. He just needed to land it. Get something on the board for overall. Here's another skier that had a flag in his back pocket. Hey Tony, I've lost my, what am I doing here mate? No worries, mate. You can sort it out eh mate? Anthony, here we go. Yeah, how good is that, uh, the Chileans? It's the third skier we've had at this event that has had a national flag tucked in their arm sling somehow. I don't know how they're doing it. Someone said there might be someone down in the water handing flags out, but I haven't seen it. I think they're tucked in the arm sling. That is pretty sensational. Maybe they should worry a little bit less about uh, having the flag to fly and actually make sure they get a score on the board first. Although I say that in jest. Well done to Martin Labra. Okay, we've got a uh, change of drivers here for C2, for Series 2. Looks like we have got the great uh, Scotty Greenwood heading in to drive this event. One of the pride of uh, Arkansas, I think it is, Scotty Greenwood. One of the great uh, jump drivers in the world. He'll be uh, driving this Series 2 jump event. We see uh, Rodrigo Miranda. He's pulling the it's rope in there. He's talking to young Martin Labra. Just waiting for you that was a close one there. We almost had uh, one of the favourites for the overall. Uh, not to get a score on the board. So this is a dramatic sport, isn't it? Tournament water skiing. There's a togetherness in this. As if you're tied to something greater. Knowing there's so much left to discover. South Walls in Florida. Find your perfect beach. Then Hello, and, uh, Natalia Bernikava here, Mark's Formal Champion, World Record Holder, introducing the new Edge Trick Binding. 3D printed plate creates for more control and support on the water. Plus this binding is very unique because we have two options. 
Option 1, with toe clamp and heel clamp dedicated specifically for hands. Option 2, with the releasable plate, could be used for hands and toes. And the binding suits for all levels. For the upcoming season, it's time to get on edge. For this event, Zane Nicholson will be back in to help me out with the slum event. So we've got 13 skiers remaining. The cut line... Okay, welcome back, folks. Uh, continuing coverage of this under-21 men's jump elimination round. We're into Series 2. This is Garrett Reese out of uh, California, Northern California, jump number one. He's got some speed here, and up he goes. That's a tidy jump to open with. Well done, Garrett Reese. Conditions are good at the moment and we're enjoying some great jumping. We saw it Martin Labra just for the break there. 53.1 metres or 174 feet. So Martin Labra took the lead in this uh, jump event with uh, 53.1 ahead of Demir Flaratov out of the Ukraine. He's on 51.5 and Chilean Vicente Tiza who uh, has 49.3. Garrett Reese opens up. I thought a pretty tidy opening jump for him. The young uh, guy from Northern California, 55 metres. We've got a new leader, folks. He's straight into the lead off jump number one. And close to where he needs to be, I think, to make the final. I'm going to pick the final cut. It'll be around that 58 metres. So uh, he's not quite there, but uh, he's getting closer. Jump number two coming now for Garrett Reese out of uh, Northern California, representing the US of A. Or actually, skiing is an independent, so he's representing himself, but he's still part of Team USA, you'd have to say. 55 metres to open, he's got the lead, he's into the ramp, he's got more speed on this one, I think. Geez, a little check of himself as he came down from his float. Oh, almost uh, out over those tips, but maybe I'm talking it up a bit, but... Just a little bit far forward. Looking for the headwind that possibly isn't there. It's pretty glassy calm down that end of the lake. But a nice jump from Garrett Reese. He seems to be in good form. Tricked uh, super well uh, on the first night of the under-21s. Oh, geez, big upper body crush. We saw that great pitches from jump cam there. See how far this one is. He's got the lead at the moment with 180 feet. Oh, it's even further, 56.6, 56.6, which is going to be going to be up around uh, 185, maybe even more in feet. That's our, definitely our lead, and he's starting to get close to that where he needs to be to make the final. Here he comes now, Garrett Reese, third and final. He's got 56.6, 56.6 metres. He leads the event at the moment. He needs a little bit more, I think, to make the final. Another metre or so should just about get him into the final. Up he goes, over the ramp. That's a big jump. That is a really nice jump. I think that could be further. Is that going to be 58 metres? If it's 58 metres, I think he started to get, got a bit of a sniff of making a final here, Garrett Reese. We'll wait for the distance. How far is that, folks? How far is that? See him here, just, only just makes it on the corner of that jump ramp. May want to check his fins after that one. We'll wait for the distance. Next competitor, Blaze Grubbs, also from Northern California. He's getting ready to go. Oh, it's not as far. 50, 54.9. It's not as far as his second jump, 
will be the jump that Garrett Reese will take into, uh, hopefully into the final. He's got a bit of work to do though. He's going to have to wait. He's going to be sweating on that distance, I think, for a little while. Okay, so Blaze Grubbs, uh, of course, uh, competed in the under-17 Worlds where he finished second in the overall. He's got a personal best at uh, 51k at about 55 metres, but he, uh, I'm thinking, would have put his speed up here. I'm sure that he's gone at least to 54k because the under-17s are stuck at 51 kilometres per hour. I'd say at least he's gone up to... Uh, to that uh, 54k or the 33 mile an hour maybe even uh, right up to 57k or 35 mile an hour I'm not sure that I can whether I can find that out or not but uh, that should see a little bit more distance out of blaze okay here comes blaze grubs He's going to be out and around the island. Scotty Greenwood uh, driving the boat. And he will be straight in to the pullout zone for his double cut, I'm sure. He knows this place really well, of course, though. Second sight for Blaze Grubbs. Oh, well, he's going to do a three quarter cut. Three quarter cut here. Which is an interesting move. He did doubles, of course, in the under 17s, but I think because he's put his speed up, he's decided to go with a three quarter cut. Get some scores on the board, get his eye in. Up he goes, tidy jump. Jeez, he's a talent, isn't he? Blaze Grubbs out of Balacqua, of course, in Sacramento, Northern California. And he's opened up with a tidy, decent effort. We'll wait for the distance. I reckon he needs about 58. 58 plus, I think, will get you into the final. It could be wrong, though. I'm having a bit of a guess. Hopefully an educated guess. So we watch him uh, heading on to jump cam here. He's up and over the ramp. Tidy stuff. Not really any headwind out there at the moment. It's pretty calm. The old Nautique flags are dead set flexed at the moment. 52 from Blaze Grubbs. Just a bit of a cider. Relatively easy three quarter. He's just got to get used to the faster boat speed. Of course, he would have spent a lot of time training at 51k over the last couple month or so. So 52 at the moment. Two to come. Blaze Grubs needs more. He knows it. He won't get in the final. He's also uh, one of the guys with a chance in the overall, so he's going to look to jump as far. If he can't make the final, he needs a big jump, at least for his overall in this elimination round. Full double, so we've gone three-quarter just to get used to the faster boat speed. Now we're doing the double. This should be bigger. He's wider. Makes his turn to the ramp. Can he make it on this jump ramp? He's got plenty of speed. Up he goes. Oh, geez. Be a little bit further, but I'm still not sure it's the big barnstorming jump that he needs to make the final he's a smart skier though he's building out here he's just uh, going a little bit further every jump still mean the cut line is technically two at, uh, at 11.25 meters uh, currently held by Daniela Kretzmer with that particular score and uh, that score from Ali Garcia for 11.25 so we wait for the distance plays grubs jump cam here Not sure what we're seeing up on screen at the moment now, but uh, there's another landing from Blaze Grubbs. He's heading back down towards the start dock now. 52.5. So he's got a 52. He's got a 52.5. Neither of which are enough. They're not what he's looking for. He really wants to get a 56, 57. I think for his overall, and I, if he wants to make the final, I think he needs 58, maybe even 59 metres. So he's got to come up with something on this third and final. This young superstar out of Northern California. You can see a smile on his face. He's a super happy guy. Why wouldn't you? He's got the world and at his feet. Young guy, 17, almost 18 years of age. Here we go. Three-quarter cut. Turns to 600 football. Out wide on the Nautic towboat. Blaze Grubbs. Team USA skier. 
Makes his turn for the ramp. Into the ramp he goes. He's up and over. The ramp. Oh, I don't know. He's happy enough. I think he's a bit further, but uh, whether it's the big distance he's looking for, I'm not sure. Seemed like a more aggressive cut into this ramp for jump number three. Great lift. Good air form. So we'll wait and see. Very hard for me to tell the distance uh, from my viewpoint. I'm trying to make excuses, but... Uh, We'll wait and see how far is that. How far has Blaze Grubbs uh, jumped on jump number three? Mm, 52.9. Got to say it's a bit of a disappointing set for Blaze Grubbs. Remembering that he uh, jumped uh, further than that at the slower boat speed in uh, the under-17 world. So... He's a great guy, Blaze Grubbs, and uh, he'll be philosophical about it. But I think deep down, he's still going to be a little bit disappointed with that jump set. Okay, we go to Sweden now. We've got the familiar figure on the dock of uh, Jimmy Westland, former medalist at the Under-17 World Championships way, way back in 1988, which were held on the Yarra River, of course. Some really famous skiers skied at those World Champs. Some went on to be even better skiers, guys like Scott Ellis, of course. April Coble as well. Some went on to be uh, overweight water ski commentators. Next competitor will be the big uh, Swede, Tim uh, Turnquist. He's got a personal best around 61 metres. I don't know if his jump form has been quite that good. He's, he seems to have been jumping around that 57, 58 metre mark, but... That'll do, actually. If he can get 58, he'll be sure to the final. He just scraped into the slalom final earlier on this morning. So uh, the big Swede, Tim Turnquist, up, jump number one. Yeah, so Tim Turnquist now. A little bit of training at uh, with Kyle Eid uh, at Ski Fluid. The great uh, Kiwi, of course, Kyle Eid. He's been working with this guy. I had the pleasure of driving the boat a little bit for uh, Tim at Ski Fluid. It's a very good athlete. Tidy stuff. Gets up and over on his first. Good to get that score on the board. Even if it's not huge, it's good to get a uh, score, get, you, get a feel for everything out there. We'll wait for the distance. Our lead, of course, 56-6 at the moment with American Garrett Reese. I think the cut will be up around 58, so uh, I don't think we've found a finalist yet. Although we are getting towards our last few skiers, so it's possible. 56-6 could get you in the final. Garrett Reese will be watching on, I'm sure. How far is that one? 56-1, good opening jump for uh, Timmy Tornquist out of Sweden. He'll be happy with that, I think. It's a good opening jump. It's not probably quite enough to make the final yet, but he's got his eye in. Well, I reckon uh, training uh, with Kyle to ski fluid, I reckon I saw this guy jump 200 feet. He's definitely over 60 metres. He uh, seemed to have his eye in there. Let's just see if he can't get his eye in here at uh, Picos Lake 1. Jump elimination round. Under 21 World Championships. We're looking for 12 finalists. We're down to about 14 skiers to go. So we're getting down to the um, the money end, the business end of this uh, elimination round. Tim Turnquist now. Jump number two. See how he goes. Can he get a bit more speed on this one? Passes up. Let's it go. I think it was a, a good spot. I thought it was a good spot anyway. But obviously didn't feel uh, comfortable enough coming into this jump ramp. May have even been a little bit early there, I'm not sure. So he's got a 56-1, which is a great effort. I'm not sure it's enough to make the final, though. Skied half at 10.75 in slalom earlier on today, which uh, made put him last in. He was last into that slalom final. He had to run into 39 to make the slalom final, done to 21s.
fast course angle. This is 12 meters, a pass that she knows that she's got to run anything less, and it will put a Chilean skier through to the next round. Oh my word, and I think that just, that had, that had just done it. Five on 12 meters, that admits Daniela Kretzka through to the next round of the competition by way of that score. So Tim Turnquist now, he's back towards uh, back towards the dock end. He's got one jump to come. He needs really needs to get more than 56-6 here and take the lead if he's going to make the final. Okay, here we go. Big moment coming up here for this young man. He leaves it as late as he can here as he uh, probably splits the six and the seven. 57k, five and a half foot ramp. The big Nautique, 6.2 litre, pulling him on. The big Swede. He needs to get up close to 60 to make the jump final. Into the ramp he goes. He's got a good kick off the top, has he? Oh, that's not a bad jump. We'll wait for the distance. Very cool, calm customer. He doesn't give a lot of uh, give a lot away with his body language, but we'll wait and see. How far is that? Looks like 14.25 meters. I don't see enough orange coming out of that shock tube, which would suggest that this line length is going to be somewhat shorter than 16 meters, which it is. It's 14.25 meters. Waiting for the distance. Let's see, he's uh, just only just made it on the corner here. He's got reasonable lift. Not the best lift he's ever got, but I don't think this is too bad a jump. Let's hope. Let's hope. How far is this, folks? Oh, it's 58.7 metres, and the big Swede gives himself a huge chance now of making this under-21 men's jump final. And I know Kylie will be watching back there in Orlando. He's been working quite hard with Tim over the last couple of weeks, and he'll be happy with that, I think. 58.7 should get Tim into the final. We'll just have to wait and see. Well, there we go, Sweden, of course. I'm not sure what time it's in Sweden. It's probably, I'm going to guess it's about 8 or 9 o'clock in the evening there in Sweden. And uh, on a Saturday evening, no, probably a Friday evening. And, uh, boy, geez, they'll be pretty happy right now, the Swedes, because uh, I think Tim Turnquist, he's, got a, he's made the slalom final this morning. I now think he's got a chance of making this under 21 men's jump final with 58.7. He leads this event. That's 193 feet, folks. We go to Argentina now. We've got uh, one of the resident coaches here at uh, Picos. It is uh, Patricio Zoha, one of the head coaches here at Picos. He knows this lake very well. Very strong three event skier. Wide on the Nautique tow boat. He makes his turn. Into the ramp he comes. Oh, tidy stuff. Nice opening jump. So we're waiting for the distance. I'm not sure how far it is. I don't think it's 58.7, but it's a tidy enough opening jump. Fifty-one, fifty-one to open for Patricio Zohar out of uh, Argentina. Okay, Bob, my reckoning, we are down to our final 12 jumpers, which means that uh, we have a cut, 58.7 is the cut to make the final. So, uh, and this is unofficial of course, this is uh, rough, rough mass from Glenn Williams who uh, quite frankly failed uh, 
high school maths, so uh, I could possibly do with my son uh, Curtis, the human calculator here, to help me out. But by my reckoning, we are uh, looking like we have a cut now of 58.7. So if Patricio Zoar can go more than 58.7, he's guaranteed in the final. If he doesn't, then Tim Tornquist out of uh, Sweden is into the men's jump final. That's uh, what lays in front of us here as we watch this elimination round of the under-21 men's jump. Into the ramp. He goes. Another big kick off the top. A solid jump. Don't think it's 58-7, though, i got to say. It's going to possibly be mid-50s. But I don't think it's enough at the moment to take the lead off the big Swede. Just watching uh, jump cam there. He's a little bit earlier, I think, than uh, some of the previous skiers. Needs to bring it down a bit. 53-4 is a good jump. It's solid, but not enough, I don't think, to make this jump final. Okay, Patricio Zoa down around the start dock. Next competitor will be Ethan McKinnon from Australia. So all the Aussies out there, your competitor is about to come. He's on the dock, Ethan McKinnon. We'll look forward to that. Patricio Zoa now. Jump number three, third and final effort. He hasn't got enough to make the final yet, folks. He needs more. He needs to work harder. He's a local here. He trains here at Curry Picos, one of the head coaches at Picos Water Ski Centre. He knows this lake. Like the back of his hand. He's got a good turn here into the ramp. He goes. Can he get up? And I think he does. This is a good jump. Jump number three. Well, I don't know if it's going to be 58.7, but geez, even if he could get himself up around 57, 56 or 57 metres, it's going to give him a chance at the final. Nice jump. Tidy stuff. Let's wait for the score. Here's jump cam. Yeah, a bit later on that one. If you kind of want to hit uh, maybe two foot in from the corner, don't you? That seems to be where Freddy Krueger hits it. 55-8. Look, it's a good jump. It might get him in the final, but at this stage, I wouldn't be too sure. By my reckoning, though, and this is unofficial, I've got uh, Tim Tornquist into the uh, jump final with 58.7. I got a feeling he's made it, but uh, it's unofficial. We'll wait and see. Well, big moment coming up now for uh, Australian viewers. I'm sure that uh, my old mate Marty Moses and, of course, uh, Ethan's mum, Amanda, are uh, watching this back home and somewhere in uh, the outback of New South Wales where they are, uh, of course... Uh, well, the man is a nurse, but uh, Marty, of course, is a sheep farmer extraordinaire. But, uh, not only that, but he's in the wool business. Not a lot of money in, I'm not sure too many listeners care about this, but not a lot of money in sheep wool at the moment. The poor old sheep farmers are struggling a bit, but great to see Ethan McKinnon out there at the moment. Because uh, going to school at Lafayette in Louisiana. And uh, looking to make this jump final, the young Aussie. We saw Levi Curtin in the under-17s. He got through to the jump final for Australia. Can we see Ethan McKinnon join him? Big roar of the North Tig as he pulls out wide. Representing Australia. Very sh big shortage of Australian skiers at this world. Let's see what Ethan can do. Let's that one go. That's not unusual. We've had a lot of passes in this event uh, so far. These guys all train with the jump ramp the other way. All the practice, all the famil, the jump ramp was facing the other way. Then we, uh, of course, had the wind turn. We've got a hurricane supposedly bearing down on us. It's about 36 hours away from us right now. So uh, they turn the ramp around to give the best conditions possible for the jumpers. But, of course, it means none of these guys have had training with the jump ramp this way.
Mind you, a guy like Ethan McKinnon, he's grown up skiing, of course, in ju at Junior Moomba. Moomba Masters is never any familiar at Moomba Masters. You just rock up on the river and you've got to uh, get out there. So uh, it's a very similar circumstance. Next competitor, we've got Carter Lucas uh, out of Canada. Up uh, next, he'll be on the water very shortly. Ethan McKinnon. All focus at the moment. Passed on his first. Now, a lot of these skiers have done this, though. They've been passing on the first. It's a bit hard. No training here. They're getting used to things. Let's see how he goes. Big full double cut for the Aussie, Ethan McKinnon. He's wide. He's in front of the boat. Let's see if he can't get something together here. Makes his turn for the ramp. Up he goes. He's over this time. Back a bit on his lift, but it's a tidy enough opening jump. At least he's got a cider. I don't think it's going to be enough to make the final, but he's got his eye in. So currently in the lead is, uh, is Ali Garcia with 4 and 11.25 minutes. In his hand, uh, looking, looking at a 5 on 12, and 3 and a half on 12 the score so far in, uh, in Series 1, but you have to look at Okay, 53.7, 53.7, it's a solid jump. I don't think it's enough to get in the final though for Ethan, so some work to come. As he uh, hits back down, he's got one last roll of the dice. 53.7 is solid, but he really needs, he really needs, well, fit the cut now is 56.6 with Garrett Reese out of California, out of uh, the USA. So he needs, he needs 56.7 to be guaranteed in the final. So that's another three metres, another 10 feet for uh, Ethan McKinnon from Australia. Here we go. Makes his approach out wide on the Nautique. Flying the Aussie flag. A very uh, small Australian team this year in the under-21s. In fact, it's all Ethan McKinnon. Oh, geez, Ethan McKinnon's gone out the back here. He slipped right out on his heels. And hopefully he's okay. I think he'll be all right. He just uh, it wasn't the worst crash ever, but he's landed right back on his uh, heels and on his back. He might be a little bit winded. So that's disappointing for Ethan McKinnon. Swimmer's there with him. Um... So hopefully he's okay. I've got a feeling he will be. I think he'll just be maybe be a little bit winded here. Slips back here. Still hurts at that speed and that height. As he smacks into the water, he's going to have to live with 53-7, the Aussie. And I think that means now Garrett Reese is going to make his way into the final with yeah he's just too far back he probably would have passed that jump if he didn't have to go over there's a great shot there well not a great shot if you're his mother i'm sure but uh a great shot uh from the side of the ramp there he's just too far back and uh slips out there but they're just taking their time here to make sure he's okay certainly will knock the stuffing out of you a fall like that Great safety crew here. We've got professional uh, safety people, of course. We've got swimmers in the in the White Nautique. That's our rescue boat, the White Nautique. And uh, they're all fully trained and uh, looking after our skiers. And it looks like Ethan's going to be okay.
So now we're working our way to our next competitor, uh, representing the United States of America, also as a team member. It is going to be Kennedy Hansen. Uh, here's a replay uh, for everyone around the world, especially those back in Australia. Just exactly what went wrong with this young Aussie. Yeah, and he's uh, hit the water pretty hard there, but I'm sure he's going to be okay. At least there was no ankles or knees or anything going in awkwardly. So there it is folks, we had a pass on the first, we had a 53-7 on jump number two and then we had a crash unfortunately on jump number three. He's sitting in fourth spot at the moment, Ethan McKinnon, but we've still got uh, a few skiers to come. We've got two more skiers in this series and then we have uh, nine skiers, or actually maybe eight skiers in this next slot because uh, I think uh, Lindsay Bordier is, uh, has... Uh, has not entered or he's not jumping so uh, eight and two make ten so ten competitors to go that means that Carter Reese and Tim Tornquist have uh, punched their ticket into the final so the cut at the moment drops back at the moment we go back I think to Patricio Zoha 55 55.5 I believe it was 55.5 from Patricio Zoha is the cut at the moment. So uh, this young guy out of uh, the eastern side of Canada across, Carter Lucas. Now, any Kiwis at home will remember his uh, his dad, Norm Norm Lucas, who skied uh, the Nationals in New Zealand back way back in 1997. He was down there at the first ever Nationals at Lake Crichton. And Norm Lucas, of course, uh, spent a summer in New Zealand skiing, but... Uh, he also hosted the uh, 1996 Junior World, Under-17 World Kiwi team in Canada. So shout out to Norm, his young fella Carter is skiing. And I know uh, Norm was a good good friend of uh, Luke Longney, who's a great skier out of New Zealand from Auckland, and also a good friend of my younger brother, Reese Williams. So uh, it's great to see this next generation of the, uh, of the Lucases competing here. So here he is, Carter Lucas now from Canada. Three quarter cut. Solid opening uh, jump there, up and over the ramp. Got a great style. He's a very strong young man. I understand he's uh, attending uh, Munro, first year, of course, of uh, university in Munro uh, in Louisiana. So he's getting used to uh, college life. Let's see if that's enough. We'll wait for the score, see if he's done enough to make it through to the under 21 men's jump final. We're waiting for the distance as he heads back down towards the start dock end. He'll make his turn around the aisle and for jump number two. Here we go, 54.7. So solid opener, but not enough at this stage to punch his ticket into that final. 12 metres, well aware of what she needs. By my reckoning, if anything, she scores anything five to pass, she would Look at this, Kennedy Hansen, round all six buoys. All day. There you go. Six buoys there at uh, 35 off uh, for Kennedy Hansen. Six buoys on 12 meters. Okay, here we go. Carter Lucas now. 
three quarter cut he's uh, opened up well with a 54 meter effort but he needs more he really needs to get about 56 meters here to get into the final at this stage into the ramp he comes a oh, solid jump another good jump similar sort of hole though 54 maybe 55 meters would be my guess He just crushed a little bit on the ramp, didn't he, when you look at the replay. Didn't quite get his full uh, lift off the ramp there. Just have to wait for his distance. Oh, it's 56-1 though, so he's into the final. Well done. 56-1 puts uh, Carla Lucas from Canada into the under-21 men's jump final. Didn't really have the full extension off the ramp. Didn't get the, the, the good lift that I've seen him get before, but he had the speed. He's strong. He's got that low center, a bit like his old man, Norm. He's got that strong, low center of gravity. So he'll be happy by my rough calculations unofficially. He's made his way into that under-21 men's jump final. Here we go, jump number three. See if he can't go a bit further. See if he can't get us the lead, of course, as we're Sweden at the moment. 58-7 from Tim Tornquist. Here he comes, Carter. Oh, sorry, Lucas. And jump number three is another good one. See, uh, watch the replay here. Good strong edge into the bottom. Really getting some great rope pull through the air. Solid stuff. Well, I reckon he's made his way into the final. That's the way I see it. Oh, once again, he's produced a Canadian flag somewhere. I don't know where they're keeping these flags, these uh, skiers. But once again, he's come back from jump number three, 55.8. So not his biggest jump, but 56-1 is his biggest jump, and I believe enough to get through to the final. Well done to Lucas Carter from Canada. Next competitor will be Garrett Stallings out of the US of A. My memory serves me right, this uh, Garrett Stallings uh, took out the title in the men's one at the US Nationals about uh, 10 days ago. Watch that, happened to watch that webcast because my son Curtis was skiing in that event. I think Curtis finished uh, about third or fourth in that event, but this guy I think from memory took the gold medal, so he's a very solid uh, jumper. capable of jumping about 180 feet uh, I believe so uh, that's about what he needs actually 180 feet would get him into the final just squeak him in Okay, here he comes. Garrett Stallings. Jump number one, the big full double cut to start. Great US skier, of course. Skiing is an independent individual, skiing for himself, but of course proudly representing the United States. Oh, gee, slips out on the ramp there. He's going to be okay, folks. He lands that one, rides it away. Probably a little bit early, I think. He's trying to get one on the board and leaves his arms a little bit much into the base here and he slips out off the ramp. Not sure that'll be enough to make the final, but uh, he's okay. He's got two more to come.
likes of Beaumont and Lake Charles in uh, uh, Texas and uh, southwestern Louisiana, respectively, as we see the Lira Trubskaya getting through that second pass. You start to get on. Okay, opens up there with 156 feet, 47.4156 feet for Garrett Stallings. Just at the moment, the breeze has actually swung a little bit, and we've just got the slightest tailwind, the slightest cross tail, just uh, a little bit disappointing. It's not exactly what we want. We'd love to have a headwind. Ironic, really, because we moved the jump ramp, we turned it around so we get a headwind, and now we seem to have a slight tailwind. So it's pretty hard to pick the old uh, fickleness of the Florida weather at the moment. We are only about a mile from the ocean here, the Gulf of Mexico, so we do get a bit of a bit of wind in the afternoons. Here's Garrett Stallings now, jump number two. Needs more, 156 feet on jump one isn't enough to make the final. That's a bit further though. Much better lift. He's got his legs. So we'll wait for the distance. Garrett Stallings has done enough to make his way into that under-21 men's jump final. IWWF World Under-21 Water Ski Championships here at Santa Rosa Beach in Florida. Waiting for the distance for Garrett Stallings. How far is that? What's this uh, jump cam here? Oh, he got on quite comfortable there. Wasn't too late. Looks like a good spot for him. How far is this? Wait for the distance. 53.4. He hasn't done enough at the moment. The moment uh, the bubble, of course, is with Patricio Zohar of Argentina with his 55.5. So I've got to say, we're going to need a bit of work here from Garrett Stallings. He hasn't done enough. Will it be Argentina? Will it be the USA for this next spot in this final? We'll wait and see. Third and final. With the slightest of tail breezes here on this uh, jump course at the moment, these guys will not be liking that. They'd want a headwind, but it's not too bad though. It's not super strong. Here he goes, jump number three, Garrett Stallings the ramp he goes ah, solid enough it's not huge though I don't think solid tidy jump but didn't really get it all together this set Garrett Stallings out of the US yeah upper body uh, crush there the chest was forward as he came off the top he's not he looks at the boat he's not happy with something I'm think it's probably more his performance But we'll get a score through. I've got a feeling he's wait for it. Yeah. 45.5 is not enough. So 53.4 will be his best. He's still in with a shot of making the final, but uh, i got to say it's looking looking a little unlikely at the moment. And Patricio Zoho, Zoho now, I believe, from Argentina, has made his way into the final. Okay, folks, we're into our top seed now. The uh, under-21 seed one of men's jump. We've got uh, first up Eduardo Morenzi of Italy. Then we've got Tobias Georges of Argentina, the former under-17 world champion, Alexander Solmanov. We go to Italy with Florian Path. We've got Brett Stackpole out of the US of A. Uh, we have a scratching in the jump event by Lindsay Bordier of France. But then we go to the current Junior World Champion Pole, Deplan Freiberg of France. And then Luca Rechantwald of Austria, Rackenwald of Austria. And then, of course, the favourite, uh, Jonathan Lutz of the US of A. So uh, there we go. Some of these juniors would have put their speed up, I'm sure, from 51 to 57K. 
Our last couple of jumpers will jump off six foot, up to 1.8 metre height. So there's plenty going on here, folks. The current score to beat. I'll have to get back to you on that, but I think it's around 54 metres to make the final at the moment. So the cutters ended up lower than I believed. I don't know if conditions are exactly what these guys want. We've got a slight tailwind at the moment for this jump elimination round. Eduardo Morenzi now. Jump number one in the Italian. Oh, that's tidy. Very tidy jump to open with. We'll wait and see how far that is, but that's a tidy jump to open with the Italian. Okay. He's making his way down around and the island coming back for jump number two. Eduardo Marenzi of Italy. Good strong pull out on the Nautique. Another great jump, a little bit back on his lift, but uh, still a solid uh, effort there from Eduardo. We'll get the score through. So opening jump, of course, 58.3, which uh, puts him definitely into the fire, don't we, Eduardo? Let's see if this the second jump is any further. Fifty-nine point three. So we have got a new leader, folks. He, we had uh, Tim Tornquist of Sweden leading with fifty-eight point seven, but uh, Eduardo. Morenzi of Italy now takes the lead in the Sun of 21 men's jump. Third and final to come from the Italian. Wind's just dropped away, so uh, I said before it was a bit of a tail wind. It's really nothing at all now as he uh, makes his turn for the ramp. Glassy calm at the moment. Up he goes. Oh, that's a good jump. It really is. Is it possible we've got our first 60 metre jump? We'll have to wait and see. He looked to be in good form though on jump number three. We're waiting for the distance. Here's a great shot as he just sneaks on the corner and a big kick off the top. Eduardo Morenzi and the crowd. The Italians are happy. Waiting for that distance to come through. Shouldn't be long, folks. And there it is, 61.9 metres. The Italian is happy. The big fist pump. He's definitely through to the final. Our first 200-foot jump of this uh, under 21 out U17, U21 world champs. An absolute ripper, 203 feet. Great to see. Here we 
go. This, here comes Steely Ross. Ooh, good strike off Bowie number one. Lever. So the bubble at the moment is uh, 53.7 with Ethan McKinnon. So the Aussies, of course, will be watching. If any of these last... Uh, Last uh, six or seven skiers can't uh, go more than 53.7, then we will have Ethan McKinnon into that jump final. Next competitor, sorry, next competitor is one of the uh, the real contenders in the overall event, of course, uh, Tobias Georges. Georges Tobias, I should say, out of... Uh, Out of uh, Argentina. Sorry, I'll get it right. It was Tobias Georges, of course, out of Argentina. Really good. I think he almost got a PB in slalom earlier today. Slalom was weak event in overall, but he ended up running one and a half at 10.75. So he's uh, going pretty well in his campaign. Up he goes and over the ramp. That's solid, really solid jump there to open up with this young superstar. I know I've seen him a bit at uh, the Moomer Masters over the last few years, particularly junior Moomer Masters. Very good uh, competitor. Canada. 56.9, 56.9, opening jump, solid, he's through to the final. Tobias Georges has made the final in the Sun of 21 boys. Young Argentinian, through to the final. The under 21 men's jump. The final, of course, will go uh, tomorrow afternoon. We're going to finish up uh, these worlds tomorrow night, a day early. We're, we're due to finish Sunday, but uh, with the uh, impending hurricane uh, that's coming bearing down on us, we're going to rush this program through and finish tomorrow night here, which will be Saturday in the great state of Florida, the United States of America. Another good solid jump there from uh, Tobias. Jump number two. All right, so I'm Tony Lightfoot. He's uh, Zane Nicholson on the opposite end of the desk, are taking care of uh, things with the jump event. There is Mr. Uh, Glenn Williams. And uh, we're, uh, we're almost rounding off uh, the jump event. Is, is that right, Glenn? Uh, yeah, we've st yeah, we've still got four or five skiers, so there's a little way to go yet. Apparently there's four or five skiers to go in the jump event if you want to catch up on the event to go to the other webcast player. Better still, why not have two tabs open? Jump on one tab, slalom on the other. Yeah, well, I, I understand we've currently got more people watching the slalom than jump, which is a little bit disappointing to me, Tony. We need to get more people on the jump because it's pretty exciting. 59.7 there for... Uh, Tobias Georges, he's getting close to 60. Remember, we had a 61.9 from Eduardo Marenzi out of uh, Italy. He's our leader at the moment. Let's see if we can't get another three or four 200 foot jumps in before the end of this event. Yes, a very strong effort out there from Pedrini there on uh, pass number two. That was, uh, that was 13 meters. And let's see if we can pick apart this technique a little bit here because it is, it is, it is interesting. She has the one handed gate shot. There were a lot of Okay, here he goes, Tobias Georges, third and final. He really wants to uh, have a crack at winning the overall here, or at least getting up on the podium. So, geez, the further he jumps, the better it is for his overall. Let's see how he goes. Jump number three into the ramp, he goes. Another big kick off the top here for Tobias Georges. We'll wait for the distance. Is that going to be 60 metres? That's what we want to see here. Just the one 60 metre jump so far in the under 21 worlds. Probably just missed missed it all off the ramp, possibly. But, geez, I'm being a bit picky, aren't I? It's a great jump. Waiting for the distance. Oh, that's quite late. I only just made it on that corner when you look at the jump cam replay.
55 off coming into the course, the, uh, the boat speed 55k, line length, 12 Unless you want to be on camera. 35 off that 75 foot line, leaving over 40 feet to get around all six buoys. Two and a half feet to spare on each turn, and uh, taking full advantage of it with a successful run. Power factor, yeah, and a nice uh, looking 35 off here. Okay, folks, we've got a new leader in the jump. Of course, you would have seen up on your screen, 62.7 from uh, Argentinian Tobias Georges. So he's leading the event now, the Argentinian. He's ahead of Eduardo Marenzi of Italy with 61.9, and then Tim Tornquist of uh, Sweden with 58.7. That's your top three. At the moment, uh, we go all the way down to a 55-8 from Zo for Patricio Zohar as our bottom score. That is the last man in, guaranteed in. We are waiting to see, and Australians, of course, will be tuning in because on the bubble at the moment is Ethan McKinnon with 53.7 metres. He's the guy that is biting his fingernails right now as he watches this event. Does he make it in? Right now, though, we've got one of the superstars of under-21 skiing out of Eastern Europe, out of the Ukraine. This guy was the under-17 world jump champion in 2018 in Spain. It is uh, Alexander Somolov. What a sensation. I got to call those under-17 worlds in Spain. Great opening jump. How good is this kid? He won that title, of course, that under, anyone who remembers the webcast from 2018 in this very first jump in the final. He was only 15 years of age, and he won that uh, under-17 boys jump title. And I think he's uh, just sent it down. Picos Lake won there with a great opening effort, the Ukrainian. The European champion in the overall at the under-21s a couple of weeks ago. So is he going to add a world overall championship to that? We'll wait for the score. Waiting for the distance, 59.5. That's the biggest opening jump we've had, 59.5. Here we go. He's all business, the Ukrainians. Really is a great kid though, great guy, super strong. Tricks, uh, trick last night, and we heard a uh, we, great trick event. He's got the highest scoring toe pass in the world at the moment. Tri toe pass was around 5,000 points. So he's the best, uh, highest scoring toe tricker going around in the world at the moment, this young Ukrainian. Let's see how he goes. Jump number two, open with 59.5. Can he get a bit further? Current lead is with Argentina with 62.9. Can the uh, Ukrainian go further? Mm, not quite so sure on that one. Kind of uh, missed, the, missed the trick a little bit on that one. Didn't quite get it together on his approach between the wake and the ramps. And then his ramp work was let down a little bit. We'll wait for the distance. Yeah, so good ski in there for Paige. Let's see what happened here at this gate. Uh, looks like she kind of slowed down and lost her speed a little bit. So it was a little bit narrow coming in. Had a good edge change, but didn't quite get the swing. So it's a solid jump, but I'm not sure. I think his first is going to be his best. We'll wait and see, though. I'm happy to be wrong. Yeah, 55.6. So his opener, 59.5 is his best. He's definitely into the final. Definitely into the final. And uh, Ethan McKinnon, who's not in the final at this stage with his 53.7. That's where our cut is. He's going to be have an anxious wait over the next uh, five skiers left. We've got five skiers left that need to go more than 53.7 to make it into the final so it's going to be an anxious wait I know in the under 21 women's jump earlier on we had a couple of Kiwi girls I'm from New Zealand we had uh, two New Zealand girls Courtney Williams and Lily Mead they're on the bubble right to the end unfortunately Courtney finishing 13th and Lily finishing 14th so both just missed out on the final so uh, it's tough Ethan McKinnon could be in the same boat here but once again We've got Alexander Solmanov, 
Chump number three, it's an absolute ripper, folks. He has sent it down the lake. Oh, and the fist goes up. He's happy, the Ukrainian. That is a sensational jump. Jump number three, that could be a new lead. We'll wait and see. It's definitely going to be over 60 metres. This guy is fighting hard, not only for the jump event, but for the overall title at these under-21 world champs. How far is that, Santa Rosa Beach? How far is that? That is an absolute ripper. All of Ukraine is awake and watching. Up he goes. We'll wait for the distance. I think this is going to be 62 or 63, but i um, been wrong more often than I'm right over the years, but that looked like a big jump to me. Where is it? How far is that? Oh, my Lord, it's 64.7. That's an absolute ripper from the Ukrainian. Alexander Solomonov has gone 64.7 metres. I think that could be a personal best, and I think it's a personal best by a couple of metres. There's absolute scenes at the moment from the start dock. This young bloke has just fired up the Ukrainian. He may well have, I'm not sure, I'm not on, on all over the overall, but he may well have just won the overall title with that jump because he had a pretty good slalom. I think he slalom him five at 38, oh, five at 11. We know he tricked 10,000 points. So if he's just jumped 64.7 metres, he may well have just taken out the overall title in the elimination round. So the Ukraine is awakened and rejoicing. Ukraine water skiing on top of the world at the moment as Alexander Solmanov jumps 64.7 metres. Well, what excitement. The Ukrainian, Alexander Solomonov, I think uh, at 64-7, he's got one hand on the overall title already, and we have only halfway through this event. But back on the water now, we've got Florian Path from Italy. Now, he skied super well in the final of the uh, of the under-17 boys. I think he got uh, a silver medal in the under-17 boys uh, jump. And that's a good solid opener from uh, the Italian. Well, I know I've got the jump fans on here that, uh, enjoying the jump event, and I don't want you to leave me, but I'm just letting you know that right now on our simultaneous broadcast in the slalom, that Aussie legend Sadie Ferguson with a uh, horrific uh, knee injury. She's non-weight bearing on her knee. She is uh, suiting up, folks. So if you're from Australia or anyone that likes uh, bravery, then uh, you want to tune in for the slalom soon. I think Jamie Bull's slaloming at the moment. And then I believe Sadie Ferguson is next. She's on a flight. Well, she's, actually, she hasn't found a flight yet, but she needs to fly back to Australia and get knee surgery. She's yet to find uh, a flight or, a, well, it's not so much a flight. It's uh, She's let, yet to find the Australian government to let her back into the country. So uh, she's got some drama, but she's going to have a slalom very shortly, Sadie Ferguson. So Florian Path opened up with 57.4 on his first. So he's through to the final, folks. He's made it through. So he's into the final. Ethan McKinnon's hanging on uh, out at the moment. We know that uh, Patricia Zohar is first in to this final from Argentina with 55.5. And then uh, at the moment, the bubble is 53.7 with Aussie Ethan McKinnon. That's not the jump for Florian Path, though, the Italian. He... Uh, will have a best distance on jump number one of 
57-4, I think it was. But jump number two won't be as fast. So he's got one third and final jump to come. But yeah, the uh, word from the Slalom Lake is uh, Sadie Ferguson with uh, potentially a torn ACL ligament. She is on crutches. She's non-weight bearing. She has strapped it up for her Australia, Australia, and she's going to get out there and attempt the slalom. So once again, somewhat, some would say it's a little bit silly, but uh, I think most people just recognise the toughness and the hardness of uh, that young Australian competitor, Sadie Ferguson. Okay, Florian Path now, silver medal just two days ago in uh, the under 17 boys jump final. Let's see how he goes. I'm sure he's put a speed up for this under 21 elimination round. Oh, solid jump, really nice. Wait and see how far that is, but uh, oh, he's into the final anyway. see what she can do out there but uh, if you're watching this and you're watching the other player you're certainly a, a true water ski fan I can tell you for switching between the jump and the slalom event here we go Jamie Ball 10.75 meters anything more than four on this line lane she will take her the lead I'll tell you what she's actually cleared this pass on at least a couple of occasions this season but unfortunately so Florian pass uh, third and final 59.4 so it's a solid jump Definitely true to the final. Jumps him up into fourth spot, I believe. Uh, he's definitely through to the final. Well done to the young Italian. And then we're going to go, of course, to uh, the USA. We've got Brett Stackpole out of the United States. He's uh, not on the US team. He's skiing as an independent. But, of course, they're a tight-knit community, the United States water skiing. So he will be well supported by the rest of his US uh, Team. So Brett Stackpole is up next, then we go to uh, Paul Duplan Freiburg of France, the junior world champion, and then the ramp will go up to uh, 6 foot to 1.8 metres and we have Luca Rackenwald. And, of course, uh, Jonathan Lutz off the bigger ramp. So that's the rest. We've just got down to our final four jumpers in this uh, under-21 elimination round. So Brett Stackpole now, jump number... One, he passes that one up. Well, okay, so she's made the deep water start. That's a uh, that's a beginning. Now she's going to come into the course, I believe, on something like 14.25 meters. I'm not seeing any orange, but I am seeing uh, rather a lot of heads along the shore side, uh, you know, shaking here. Look at this, though. Round number one and number two, a little bit on the back of the ski, but continuing to roll. I tell you what, a study of bravery resulted in six buoys there on 14.25 meters. And if any 14.25 meter pass deserves an applause, it's that one. Yeah, good honor there. Like, if, if people watching at home, you can see she's got a lot of tape taped up on that, that uh, front knee. Um, if I'm not mistaken, Sadie took a crash. Thank you. What do you mean she can't? She can't. Yeah, you're right. I mean, she can't. She 
she's on crutches and can't walk. She, I don't know if you can see at home, but she's like barely able to sit down and talk. And so yeah, it's, it's remarkable to see her out there skiing. That's awesome. Okay, here's Brett Stackpole, passed on his first, jump number two. Okay, Brett Stackpole is a wonderful jump. 61.6, 202 feet. That's an absolute sensation from Brett Stackpole. I've got to apologise. I've watching, been watching Sadie Ferguson slalom on uh, Lake 2, and I missed an absolute ripper from Brett Stackpole. 202 feet, 61.6 metres. Here's his third. Another great jump. Another great jump. And wow, Sadie, while we watch Brett Stackpole jump, well, Sadie Ferguson's just run 12 metre with a torn ACL. What a legend, absolute legend. Tough as nails Australian over on the slalom lake. Okay, third and final for Brett Stackpole, 56.5. He's had a good set though, 61.7, 202 feet. The young American definitely through to the final. Well done to him. Remember the cut at the moment is 53.7 or 53.8 to make the final. We've got Aussie Ethan McKinnon on the bubble at the moment. Now we're going to an up and coming superstar of world jumping. It's uh, this uh, big, strong, strapping 18 year old pole to Plan Freiburg, of course, junior world champion. He went 60.1 in the elimination round of the under-17 world champs. So he's, uh, well, he's the best since Bradstreet in junior jumping, you'd have to say. Right up there in elite company, of course, a 60-metre jump from at 51K at 5.5 for a junior skier. I can only think of Tim Bradstreet that's been further. That great Aussie. Okay, this is exciting, folks. Uh, Paul Deplon Freiburg from France. Let's see how he goes. He's put a speed up, I'm sure, for the Sun of 21s. Up he goes. Didn't really get his legs completely there, but it's a solid jump to start with. 60 metres at 51k. Let's see how far he can go at 57k in this uh, under 21s.
Well, breaking news from the slalom Lakers that Sadie Ferguson scored half at 11.25 and has possibly set herself up for a runoff in the slalom, which is probably not what she wanted with a uh, sore knee, but uh, that's the way it's looking at the moment for Sadie Ferguson. Fifty-five point six, fifty-five six to open for the uh, French superstar Pole Duplan Freiburg. He's in to the final, of course, with that distance. You want to get uh, a bigger jump, though. Get further up the uh, further up the running order. And the seedings for the final. Here we go now, Paul Duplan Freiburg, best junior jumper since Bradstreet, the great Timmy Bradstreet out of uh, New South Wales in Australia. He just uh, didn't quite get his ramp work together again. He's still jumping okay out there, he's made the final, but he's not quite getting the big barnstorming uh, jump together. And of course, putting his speed up, you know, he's been jumping for the last uh, week or two at 51 kilometres per hour to train for the under 17 world. And he's put his speed up now. Just taking a little while to get uh, to get his eye in with that faster boat speed, I think. So, I mean, we're still in disbelief, aren't we? There's a scene that faded Sadie Ferguson's ski half a good 11.25 metres of potential runoff situation between Sadie and Alyssa Drake. Things have had a lot Yeah, no, that's super impressive. I mean, Here he goes, Paul Duplan Freiburg from France, the world under 17 champ. This is the under 21 elimination round. He's got uh, he's got about 56 metres. He wants 60 on his 30. Oh, that's a, not a bad jump there. I think he'd be happy with that one. We'll wait and see. He looks uh, fairly conservative in his uh, celebrations there, but we'll wait and see. I think that looks uh, like a, a decent sort of a jump for Paul. Super strong young guy. Big kick off the top, wasn't it, on jump number three. Flies down that lake. Wait for the distance. I think it's going to, yeah, over 60. 61 metres. Well done. Takes a little while to adjust that faster boat speed, doesn't it? And just because you jump 60 metres at 51k doesn't mean you immediately put your speed out to 57 and, and go five, six metres further. Takes a little while to adjust, and uh, he's got through to the final with 61. So now the ramp will go up to 1.8, the big six-foot ramp, the ramp, of course, that the pros use for the last two jumpers in this event. Luca Rockenwald of uh, Austria and uh, Jonathan Lutz from the US of A are our final two competitors. So we'll be back, I'm sure, in just a couple of minutes. more control and support on the water. Plus, this binding is very unique because we have two options. Option one, with toe clamp and heel clamp, dedicated specifically for hands. Option two, with the releasable plate, could be used for hands and toes. And the binding suits for all levels. For the upcoming season, it's time to get on edge.
Walton, Florida, inspires everyone to explore freely in search of the next great moment. Because sometimes the deepest memories come from just below the surface. South Walton, Florida, find your perfect beach. In South Walton, Florida, it's almost as if your memories have always been here, just waiting for you to find them. All it takes is a little exploration. South Walton, Florida, find your perfect beach. Super excited, running that 38 off. Okay, welcome back, folks, uh, to Lake One, the Jump Lake. We're down to our final two competitors in the under 21 boy or men's jump elimination round. The ramp has gone up to 1.8, the big six foot. It's Luca Rockenwald of uh, Austria. And uh, he needs more than 53.7 to make it to the final. For him, that's really just going over the ramp. Although he does slip out a little bit on that one. I'm, I'm sure it'll be over 53.7, but not by a lot, possibly. And uh, remember, Ethan McKinnon on the bubble at the moment from Australia with 53.7. Our lead jump, of course, uh, is with the young Ukrainian, Alexander Somonov. Uh, he's got 64, I think it was 64.9 metres from memory, which was a personal best for him. He's leading at the moment. And possibly uh, has uh, maybe won the overall as well, Alexander, with that, because he had a great trick run last night. Over 10,000 points, and he ran 5 at 11 in the elimination round of the slalom today. So he's in good form as a young Ukrainian. But uh, back to the jump event, we've got the Austrian, Lok Luka, of course, with 57.3 to open. So he's through to the final. One skier uh, left on the dock, with this, which is a USA skier, Jonathan Lutz. Final two jumpers uh, on Lake Two. We are coming to a conclusion in the girls or the women's slalom elimination round. It's looking potentially like a runoff uh, over there between, uh, believe it or not, Sadie Ferguson and Alyssa Drake. Uh, and Sadie Ferguson, of course, is skiing with that uh, torn ACL ligament. So it's been some sort of Herculean performance from Sadie, the young Aussie, to get a run off in that slalom elimination but back on the jump course and Luca there he's slipping out a little bit he's not quite getting it together the Austrian in this jump event I mean he's through to the final he's fine but 
this now is a 14.25 meter start is Anne Marie Robleski. One more. Yeah, wait for the distance for Luca, but uh, I don't think he's quite got the distance he wants out here. He's uh, in the high 50s again, lots of speed. But that big 1.8 meter ramp, you've got to be in better position than that when you hit it to get uh, the form you need. Uh, waiting for the distance to come through. As he heads back down towards the start talk end, he's got one jump to come. Here we go. Ah, oh, 62.5. It's a, geez, a 200-foot jump. I didn't think he had the greatest ramp work there, so it just shows the speed he's got. This guy can definitely jump further. That jumps him up into third spot at the moment. Still leading as the Ukrainian with a 64.7, Alexander Somolov. Then in second spot, of course, uh, we've got Tobias Georges with 62.9. Here we go, jump number three, the big Austrian. He'll be happy in 62.7, but he still hasn't got it all together out there. He hasn't got his legs yet. He needs to uh, find a way to get some lift off this big eight, six foot ramp with this sort of speed. I think you go, 66, 67 metres here, if you can get it all together. No, I'm not sure. I must admit, uh, my feed glitched a little bit there. I missed him actually up over the ramp and in the air. Maybe I'll see it on replay. Oh, still a great jump. There's plenty of distance in that. Probably not the set he was absolutely looking for. As I've mentioned before, though, the... These guys familled, uh, practiced uh, with the ramp facing the other way and they're taking a little while just to get used to things with the ramp in this location. So how far was the third one? We'll have to wait and see. Here we go, 61.4, 61.4. So 62.5 is the best for the Austrian athlete. That puts him in third spot. We're down to our final... Our final competitor in this under-21 men's jump. It is uh, Jonathan Lutz from the United States, Team USA skier. If he jumps 53.8, he's in the final, which should be fairly basic stuff for him. If he jumps 53.7, we'd have a runoff between him and Ozzy Ethan McKinnon. And if he jumps less than 53.7, he misses out. And Ethan McKinnon's into the final. But this guy's a 200-foot jumper, and you'd expect him to knock this uh, total off pretty simply here. So Jonathan Lutz from the United States, our last jumper of the day, because the under-21 men's jump final will go tomorrow afternoon, possibly similar time to this, maybe slightly earlier if you're setting your clocks uh, by it. But uh, tomorrow, basically, we have uh, all the finals will be tomorrow. And uh, Sunday, we are not going to ski, folks. Uh, we are going to um, get ready for the hurricane batten down the hatches and a few of us will get a COVID test and uh, fingers crossed we can get home but back on the water now with uh, Jonathan Lutz out of uh, the US of A good strong counter cut makes his turn for the ramp oh big height back a little bit on his heels but I don't think he wanted to push out too far out over the front over the front of those skis it's it's not really a headwind there. If anything, it's a slight tailwind, so he's just making sure of it. Okay, how far is that, folks? Is it enough? I think it probably is. Yes, 58.8. The Jonathan Lutz is into the jump final. Unfortunately for Ethan McKinnon and Australia, uh, Ethan's been eliminated. He's the first out or the last not in or however you want to say it. But congratulations to all our finalists uh, from Patrick Zohar's uh, 55.5 all the way up to uh, 
Alexander Solmanov's uh, 64.7. Uh, we have found our 12 finalists for the 2020 under 21, sorry, 2021 under 21 World uh, Championships. So it's the 21 21s, isn't it? The 21 U21s. You can tell it's been a long day in the sun for me, but uh, as I struggle to find my words, here we go. Jump number three. Sorry, jump number two, Jonathan Lutz. Makes his turn for the ramp. Let's that one go. Passes up. Not uh, the right body position, not the not right timing, one would suggest for Jonathan Lutz. Elects to make sure she gets out of it, checks up out of one, and then just takes the pull over to two, um, you know, to kind of to help with her positioning for Skeena tomorrow. But, um, you know, definitely knew there that she was going to get a full one and then pulled over to two. Great skin for Anne Marie. We got smiles out here at Dockside. She has made it into the final, and uh, you know, she should be happy about that. All right, then, Anne Marie Robleski. Yes, indeed. Roots are next round of the competition with, uh, what is it, two buoys, 11.25 meters. It now comes down to one final athlete to determine possibly who is through to the next round of the competition or who it will be looking on the outside, uh, looking in. Next competitor coming to us, also from the Midwest, from the Show Me State of Missouri, and has been training over at Bennett Woods East Point Zachary for the for the past a few months this season. This now is Cassidy They're Hawkins. Not there, Adam. Yeah, and I uh, I've grown up skiing with so Cassidy. Uh, she's from the area, around the same area. So uh, it's now the last Okay, one jump to come. Last jump of the evening. Jonathan Lutz, third and final. He's got a 58.8 so far. Which is 193 feet for uh, you US fans, of course. 183 feet is not as far as he normally jumps. He'll be looking for a bit more. As he uh, makes his turn, halfway between the seven and 600 footballs. And out wide on the North Tech Tobo. Let's just turn into the ramp. He's got good speed here. Oh, not bad. Not a bad jump. A little bit back off the top of the ramp, I think. But uh, it's still a decent sort of a jump. Should be 60 metres, I believe. Plenty of speed. We'll wait for the score. That's our last jump for the day, folks. Uh, it's been a great day's water skiing here. We've found our finalists in the under-21 for the female, woman and the men. Oh, geez, another skier that's found a flag. I don't know who's selling flags down at the far end of the lake, but we've had at least half the field have managed to pick up a flag from someone down that far end of the lake, and great to see as he skis back to the dock with the... U.S. flag. He's through to the final. 61.8, 203 feet for Jonathan Lutz. He's into the final. So, uh, heads back to the dock. That U.S. flag. So, we see our finalists... Uh, in this jump event. It's going to be a great jump final tomorrow afternoon here in Corey Picos's Santa Rosa Beach. Got to keep that flag dry there, Jonathan. You can't let it get wet. Keep it up out of the water. He's got help coming, I'm sure. So let's just uh, run down these scores as we wrap up from uh, Lake 1, the jump lake. The top seed going to the final will be Alexander Solomonov with uh, 64.7. Then we'll have uh, Argentinians, Tobias Georges, 62.7. Luca Rockenwald from Austria, 62.5. Eduardo Morenzo of Italy, 61.9. Jonathan Lutz from the US of A, 61.8. Brett Stackpole, 61.6. Paul Freiberg, 61 metres. So the top seven 
all over 60. Then we've got Florian Path of Italy with 59.4. Tim Tornquist of Sweden, 58.7. Garrett Rees from the US of A, 56.6. Carter Lucas of Canada, 56.1. And last in the final was the Argentinian, of course, Patricio Zohar. So there's our finalists. Look forward to that event tomorrow afternoon. And, uh, well, basically from Lake one the jump and trick lake this is glenn williams signing off if you flick over to the slalom you'll get to see the uh very end of uh the woman's slalom so have a good evening everybody we'll be back on tomorrow morning of course 8 a.m florida panhandle time over and out Sometimes the deepest memories come from just below the surface. You can taste it, see it, hear it. The sensations come back in great rushes or gentle brush strokes. They feel familiar, welcoming, inspiring everyone to explore freely in search of the next great moment. South Walton, Florida. Find your perfect beach. Not, oh, not over ski the pass so that she.